Okay, so welcome to this third video on the expectation values of random variables. So in this video we're going to discuss the linearity properties of the expectation value. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to firm up some concepts that uh, are really important for linearity, uh, which uh, we've been using prior but haven't really um, sort of firmly discussed. So firstly, uh, let's, let's, so this is the setup we have. So let's have a uh, abstract probability space over here. So this is our abstract probability space consisting of a sample space, a set of events, uh, and a probability measure. So again, I will write this out uh, there. And then we have our random variable uh, x, uh, which maps each of these, uh, well, it maps this probability space onto a, another probability space in the real line, where the outcomes are in real lines, our, our, our world, where the outcomes are real numbers. Uh, so we have some real numbers in here. Um, and uh, basically, we know that this is a random variable. This mapping is going to be a random variable uh, if, um, if in some sense, the two probability spaces are equivalent as far as probability space axioms are concerned. Uh, so, if, um, if, well, firstly, if all events, if all events in this probability space here, the inverse image of them is an event in this pre uh, in this uh, space. So let's say for all e is an element. Let's call this p p bar uh, p pr No, I don't want to call it p prime. Let's call it sigma prime. Uh, sorry, not sigma. Omega prime. For all e is an element of. Oh, rather, I should put uh, is an element of the set of events prime. So let's call this the prime um, probability space. So. Uh, Omega prime, uh, curly F prime, uh, and it will have a probability measure as well, P, pr uh, P prime. Uh, so for all E is an element of F, uh, curly F prime. So all elements um, of this set here, uh, i.e. all events in this probability space, uh, the inverse image, which is defined to be uh, the set of all outcomes, all X is an element of um, omega, such that... Um, such, oh, I shouldn't, not f inverse, x inverse, the random variable, the function is called x. So, such that x of little x is an element of e. So, basically, uh, find me the set in here such that all the elements in that set are mapped onto uh, the set e in here. So, here is f inver uh, x inverse of e. Okay, and that set... Uh, should be an element of uh, the set of events in this first probability space. Uh, it should be an element of curly F. Okay, so that's one of the properties. And then the other property is that uh, if you take uh, P prime of E, uh, then that should be equal to P of X inverse of E. So basically, uh, if you take the probability of this event in here, it should be the same as the uh, inverse image of the event, uh, which is also an event, so it's described for probability in here, uh, it should be the same number. Okay, uh, so the first thing I want to say is I want to define what alpha of x is equal to, so if where alpha is a real number. So basically, all you do uh, when you uh, multiply a random variable by alpha is you multiply all of these uh, real numbers in here by alpha. So you take all of these outcomes and you effectively, uh, you effectively construct another map where you m multiply them all by alpha and you get some more real numbers over here. And I just want to show you why that is a probability space. So in a way, all you're doing is... Um, all, all you're doing is relabeling all the outcomes in here with alpha times their outcome, uh, the alpha times the number that corresponds to the outcome. So, so let's say let's say our probability space is a Bernoulli a Bernoulli p space. So let's have zero one, and um, uh, so uh, just make it concrete. Let's have our abstract probability space being heads and tails, and we map heads onto one, and we map tails onto zero. Well, we could take this is the random variable x, we could take alpha times x, and we could let alpha equal 2, and that would map this onto 0, 2. So 0 would go to 0, because 2 times 0 is still 0, and 1 would go to 2. Okay, uh, so all I'm doing effectively is relabeling these, and of course the probability of getting heads is some p, and the probability of getting tails is 1 minus p, which we often denote q. Uh, so again, the probability of getting a 0 is p, and the probability of getting a 1 is q. And again, we'd, uh, we'd, um, oh sorry, no, no, the probability of getting a 0 is Q, and the probability of getting a P, uh, a 1 is 
p. Uh, so again, this would inherit the probability space structure here. So the way you define this is that this one, rem this uh, when you multiply alpha um, by this, uh, when you multiply this, sorry, by alpha, uh, which is in this case two, uh, the PMF doesn't change. So uh, the probability, let's say, of um, alpha x is equal to some alpha x where this is little x is going to be the same as the probability that x is equal to little x. Okay, um, so 2's probability, uh, which is the probability that alpha x is equal to 2 times 1, is going to be this probability that x is equal to 1, uh, which was equal to p. So it inherits the same uh, probability uh, distribution as this one here. And that's how you define alpha of x. Uh, so uh, the first uh, property of uh, the expectation value is that if you take the expectation value of this new random variable, which is alpha times x, that that is equal to alpha e of x. And this is one of the properties that we put under the, uh, under the title linearity. So this is one of the linearity properties. There is a second one, which is slightly less intuitive than this one. Uh, so let's see why this is. Well, if we look at the definition of the... Um, of the expectation value of a random variable. It's the sum over all possible values that the random variable can take on times the value of the random variable at that point uh, times the probability that x is equal to x, i.e. the uh, times the uh, probability mass for this. And this is for discrete random variables, so we're working completely with discrete random variables at the moment. Okay, uh, so now let's ask what is the expectation value of alpha x? Well, it's equal to the sum over all values of alpha x uh, of alpha times little x. So, in fact, this is the same as summing over all values of x, because if we put x into each one of these, we'll get alpha x uh, times the probability that alpha x is equal to alpha x, which we know from this is the probability that x is equal to x. So if you sum that over all x, well, we can just pull out this alpha uh, by the linear properties of, summa of summing up things, of summing up a finite number of things. But in fact, of course, you can pull out a constant even if the sum is infinite. Um, so indeed, this sum might be countably infinite because we are dealing with discrete random variables. So in the arbitrary case, you, will have, you could have a countably infinite number of real numbers. Uh, so even in that case, you can still pull out the alpha. So you get alpha x p of x is equal to x, which is equal to e of x. Um, so that's a pretty intuitive result. You know that if you uh, if you have this um, if you have this probability distribution on real numbers and you multiply all the real numbers by alpha and you ask what is the expected value now, then it should be alpha times whatever the expected value was before. Okay, so that's a pretty intuitive result, and that's the first result of linearity. So now we'll do the second result of linearity, which is. Um, a little bit more uh, less trivial, yes, far less trivial, uh, not as easy to guess. Okay, so the other one we wanted to find, we defined what alpha of a uh, random variable is. So um, actually, we'll do this in the second part uh, in the second part of the video. So we'll have a break here, and we'll cover this in the second uh, video.